lo kate besa babelungu makam gabelunga ngene phatsi kombete lo mfanyana lo I used to sleep under packets where she used to work at the station through the nights waiting for customers to come from Johannesburg selling alcoholic beverages and anything available at that particular time. During apartheid it was very difficult because even though it was difficult for my mother to see a white man at that time it was forbidden and just as forbidden for, for my father for him to go and, and have a relationship with a black person. It was a sin, it was wrong. I felt the brunt of, of all of this. I grew up not knowing what is it like to say, hello daddy, or to even hear a father saying, I love you son, or even a mother saying, well done, I love you. It's something that I don't know what it's like. I've, I've never felt it. My name is Malcolm, Sunny Boy in Tlaco. I was born in 1977 in an area called Yubombo, up on the mountains, a few kilometers from Mkuzi. <laughs> My father being a white man and my mother being black. Tapsil and Lego. These two weren't allowed to be together. My father tells of a story when he used to hide from his parents in order to see my mother. He grew up in a very harsh way. And he, but he kept those sincere and simple values of uh, respect and kindness. And he's, he really has grown up into the most amazing person. You wouldn't know that he's this big successful engineer. And I love that in a person. Thank you for your hospitality and thank you for having us here. He never forgets his roots, not afraid of his roots. He's not shy to show where he comes from. so <laughs> Yeah, Oh, I see, mm -hmm. I see. I see. Yebo, I see. 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 I Yet he's, 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 he's able to, to be that uh, father for our children. This wall here did not exist. It was just one open plant. 
and then and then we would sleep somewhere. She would put a curtain across, so we would sleep here. One because Now after staying here, I moved to stay there with uh, Auntie Brenda and Peter, the colored family, the same family that put me through school. Mm. But this was home. He was staying with his aunt in Mkuzi and he went to go and stay with Auntie Brenda. Oh, of course you don't know how I've been dying to see you. How I came to meet Malcolm was through the streets when we walked in, going to the shops and things, we'd always see this little boy running around by the markets. And I also knew his mom. We, we were like the kings of the towns, so, you know, obviously like vultures and scavengers. We used to go to dumps. And so I'm sure they started questioning, who does this child belong to? One day his mom decided to come to me to ask me if I could take Malcolm in and send him to school because he was actually a lost boy. For the first time in my life, I got a sense of what it's like to actually have a family where there's a mother in the house, there's a father in the house, and there's kids. Because what it did for me, it gave me some sense of, of calmness, you know, some sense of protection. A bit hard for him, not understanding what is really going on. Why is he in this situation? Yes, his mom used to come now and then and see him. But uh, I know he had a lot of, lot of questions in his mind, little mind. I sent Malcolm to school I sent and Malcolm to school and daddy 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 to school we drove up to Mkuzi with Malcolm and we drove up to the gates of Ghost Mountain in, and we knew all these stories about his auntie. We haven't met anybody at that point. And you meet somebody at the gate who comes out and says, Sunny boy and called him by his original name. Wow, it was amazing. All these stories that he'd been telling us were now coming alive. And, and also to know all the characters, his auntie, his father. I only wish we could have known his mother. Um, that, that I know it's a, it's a sadness. Sunny Poe's mother, Tapsile, she was my big friend. We were friends, we were like drinking friends. Ask her, Katie, what's happened to Tapsile? So our top seal is why a goalie. I think uh, someone else took her to to Joburg. Mama ko hamba ang masu to shonat. O hamba ay kung lumita na siya ham seal school in Ethiopia. Ngobe na majang mas no mo kono no makiko angas. O shono mama o shi alizinga ne ziselekege no mama engeko. No mama gasan po ay wag ng last phone ka koko. Taking away the mother figure in a child's life is the equivalent to stripping an infant from, from his or her mother's breasts. Watati koma zake wa ikoli. Mama san po ima hambile wa ikoli. Wa hamba wa hamba wa hamba si tiskat. Waboya waboya. Hamba for good manje. Jeng obenj na manje singa pindanga sa ze sambon. Hey, she knows we were pals. Same, yeah. We were pals. Same, back in the day. In the evening when I knock off from the tea room, each one's got a six pack. <laughs> Shame, I remember. Uh, Sunny boy's mommy fell, tap silly. She fell, she went, <laughs> shame, and she fell. She says, oh, Kosia. But the band baboni rubbish. Guantlo, Lagua, what they saw on which was. Name coming, name, 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 name,
na ke ebi ze nge lo kunja na etu etu ipusman ipusman yeah wam kwa ga ge la po ge 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 akan fune mta bu pusas ma zo to pick boy ge nge nge nga ukuthi tini singisi sasi ngasazi ngale sasikhathi u sunny boy ube umakhela nwam i background yakhe singayazi kahle kodwa ufike nje sekhulile cishe la ku go 10 best try lokum tshontsha ke si ngiyobhukuda naye so yena ke into eyigame kakhulu kuyena ukuthi wayihlukile ke yena kunathi ngoba umuntu owethe ukuhluka kancane best try lokudla ngaye ke la ku farm sokhamba ama tourist kule ndawo esasikhula ke yona yeah avele babona le ngane samba lethe ihlukile He would run alongside him and call sweet, 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 sweet. It was such fun, you know. And very seldomly, they would just go without giving us anything. Very, very seldomly. It was beautiful because after calling out and begging for sweets, they would fling it out the windows. and we would be scrambling and grabbing it and fighting for forever sweets so ngenxa ukuthi uthe ukuhluka hluka e umuntu othe ukuhluka hluka kancane so babe sasi wathola kakhulu kama sweet ngaleso sikhathi masina okunye ngakubalula ke best try lokugibela imbongolo imbongolo bekuyashi ke kule ndawo kwako ingozi khona ugibela imbongolo kodwa yena wayithanda kakhulu le mbongolo ginga ke yena zazi thanda kumfaka la imeve you used to see it easily with me because i used to get bruised and i used to start bleeding and stuff like that when when i'm on the donkey just about comfortable they would come from the back and it either yank its tail for them it was fun for me to get hurt they wanted to just see me getting hurt these guys were really accommodating it was amazing because um although they saw that i was different but there's not a moment i actually felt that i was different Boy, so we can learn something for you. Stay tuned. Quarter, lab, lab, phone, no, go, zoro, la, 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 pagi, mo, zoro, la, la, laki. So at the country club, there was a small little. I wouldn't even call it a house. That's all I can remember, and that's all that was home to me. It was literally maybe three meters by three meters in in size. It housed myself and it housed Auntie Gerti. as well as her son which is Anton one of the twins eh and you get some memories Linda eh eh all right and it may have been very very difficult as well for Auntie Gerti because Auntie Gerti was at work this was her place of work it wasn't her place of comfort a place to to look after children and then again we did not know that we were causing problems for her being there So basically u aunty you know we used to sometimes help her like weekends after there's an event here um we used to come maybe and maybe help her mop the floors and actually stack the chairs because the chairs would be scattered everywhere Babe sho ukuthi hayi ingane seyithandi lapha thina ingane zizoganga kodwa ke ngibahlalise njengenkani yami Eh And at that particular time I didn't even know that my own father was a white man I had no idea that literally he was not even a, a stone throw away we bona mna kwa kusethila bapho kubuka kwa kulo sun boy kanjena njengana um eventually i went to live on to brenda that was like an upgrade for once i had a room i had a bed and she used to cook fantastic food auntie gerti used to make certain boiled stuff and mkapi so and all that kind of stuff chicken feet i remember we used to drink umpopodlo and obviously it was sugar water with bread very uh, moderate kind of lifestyle but when i started living with auntie brenda as i said that it was a really big jump from what i was used to Malcolm was a splendid child had that beautiful smile on his face very naughty when they got together with my two little boys climbing trees they were very well known for that in shooting birds when we walking that all is mistaken us have mistaken identity so because of uh, obviously we sort of looked alike when we were young i don't know if we still do now, but yeah yeah <clears throat>
people used to think we're twins. And if I used to be roaming the town by myself without Jeffrey, they would think that I'm Jeffrey. And he, he used to tell me the same thing, that people used to call him Sunny Boy. I remember we used to hang around the dumps together as well as Anton, my cousin. And uh, Jeffrey was very open-minded. We used to go sit under the bridges. We used to shoot birds. We used to walk on the train lines. We were so naughty. We used to leave coins on the train lines and see what it looks like. I was always getting naughty, going shooting birds. We used to stay there under the bridge, in fact, and um, we used to go and sit there by the train tracks sometimes. And we used to go swim at the river, go down to the dam, go and catch some fish sometimes. So we basically knew each other from the time we were very young. Mkuzi wasn't such a big place, so you couldn't really, but there's not much to do. I'm trying to make a lot to know. Hamba, my pambo go be o hamba. No more call it o gupi. Tata denga ne o ise schoolen etegui ne ganje 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 ganje. Bam tushi sabam tiano wa hamba. Because I had to leave where I was having problems with Peter, and so I had to leave and and find my own way. Also for the sake of my two kids, because there was a bit of abuse. So if Uncle Peter would come home late. I would sense that he's going to come home and he's going to be very upset with everybody. And I used to tell Auntie Brenda and, and, and tell, I think it was Riso Ricardo, that let's, let's hide under the beds because Uncle Peter's coming, he's coming, he's coming. And we used to come back drunk, I remember. How we'd, we'd say, you must hide under the bed when he comes and we'll hide under the beds over here. It's like I could, I could tell that some, there's some tornado coming into the house. He would hide the... Why does the lamb and Peter's trying to look for him, look for him, they can't find him, it's quiet. I thought it better that I also leave for the kids' sake. It wasn't long I heard Malcolm was in Durban in the home of safety and I was very happy that he was there because at least I knew that he had some direction now. You know, my mother was one that doesn't really show emotion. But at that particular day, I remember looking at her eyes and in she seemed very disturbed. She seemed like she was hurt, you know. She actually hugged me and she held me for a long time. I'm not sure if that was a sign to say, well, goodbye, my son, and I'm not sure if I'll ever see you again. It was, it was the most painful thing that I've ever had to, had to endure and to actually look at my mother and to wave her goodbye and not know when I'll ever see her again. Sometimes I feel like a motherless child. It actually felt like I was being torn away from the only people that I knew in Mkuzi and to go to an unknown territory. Sometimes I feel like a motherless child. be lost. What's my tomorrow like? You know, what have I done to deserve this? That all the people that I've known. Our whole aim was even coming to build here. We built a cottage system in order to give the children a better environment so that and to help them to be better people. If for instance you achieved your dream, you liked music. I worked with children for many years. A lot of my work was trying to help children to reintegrate back into families and eventually landed up at St. Philomena's Children's Home in 1994. At that point I met Mello or Malcolm. Initially it was Sunny Boy when he arrived at St. Philomena's and soon after that he became welcome. The cottage system was to give them that family atmosphere. I think you can remember when Patrick used to take you to different camps and all that, mm -hmm. where you used to go out. And that was all giving you an experience of uh, life out the, also in the wilderness. I still, we still have some pictures of all those camps you used to go to. Once he reached high school, he changed his name from Welcome mm -hmm. to Malcolm feeling that being in a coloured community he would fit in better 
and he used the surname Norsworthy and not Ndeko. I sent Malcolm to school and gave him the surname Norsworthy so that he, could, he, he would not feel out of place being in apartheid times. Identity crisis. I'm living amongst coloured. I was born of a black mother. My father was white. So in South Africa, I would be called a first generation coloured. Um, I remember often when he received certificates, he would be very upset if you had placed the name Ndleko on there and not Norsworthy. That was very, very difficult. And you're growing up with predominantly people of such pride of this coloured race. And this confusion often caused him and I to have some conflicts because I was quite determined for him to have his real surname, which isn't Leko. It became so, so uncomfortable for me, really, that this whole identity became an issue for me. It was difficult sometimes for him because he wasn't like the other children. He had a spark inside of him that, and a determination inside of him that was going to take him out of poverty, out of institutional care, and into the real world. In fact, he used to wake us all up in the morning with his music and at that stage the bass had just come out as a major factor and the bass would wake I think the whole, all the children up in the cottage and he would be there um, blasting the bass off and I would have to go up and say turn it down, turn it down. The interesting thing is that he just had a, a car radio that he played everything off and he had adapted everything onto the car radio. Speakers, uh, uh, equalizers, and the whole system was going that sounded like a, a real big system. The humble beginnings of living in outbuildings, studio in the bedroom, a, a mic above my head, <laughs> the bed is one side, the TV is that side, there's a computer, everything happening out of one room basically. It's a combination of R&B, um, Fido and a little bit of house. Hey, I wouldn't mind at the moment I'm actually producing other artists in Dublin. Yeah. I wouldn't mind actually giving other artists the exposure to these this guy joined us and he joined our conversation. He was like, he said, no, it sounds very nice and different from the sounds I always hear here in Devon, but I can do justice in this. I can mix it. And I was like, are you the guy they were talking about? And I was like, yeah, I'm Malcolm. That's how we met. Malcolm. <laughs> There's a lot of experience and in the uh, only comes from which we have step by step. But as a sound engineer and then as an engineer, they try to place it. Then an opportunity came up for um, that we saw in the newspaper that um, the peace train we're going to have auditions. And so I put Malcolm together with a friend of his, Kenneth, into the car. At that stage, um, the auditions actually were over and I ran to Sharon Katz and I begged her. Please, uh, Sharon, I've got these two, two boys from the home. Can, can you make time? I said, sure, of course, bring it on. That's what I do. Very talented with music. He always has been, to the extent that sometimes his music could overpower other things in his life, like his studies and his other commitments that he had. But his music was always a stabilizing factor. Now was at the bus stop, ready to go home. 
And a couple of brothers for me all alone. Yeah, I never knew what was going on in your minds. All I knew I was going home at the right time. Yo, one brother tap me on the back. And as I turned around, more say attack. Uh, no what was that to do to a center of a trap? I couldn't make a move or else I wouldn't be out of rap. Yo, the fleet now see my face. I said grace. I thought I was going to die without saying bye. Without a cry to my homies, I thought I'd lose my life when I saw a copy night. Check it out. A night for my neck. Along came Malcolm and he gets up on stage with his guitar and he plays a, a Stevie Wonder song lately and all the girls are screaming. It was love at first sight. So I remember going into stage. So they walked in and they just stood and they were like shocked. And I thought they were going to chase us off because I mean, who are these guys on stage now? And all the girls, whoa, they're so nice, you know? When I think about him, I think about Malcolm, the artist, the phenomenal talent, which just my heart and my, my whole soul responded to him, even when he was a young child like that. I, I do remember the first day. I do remember how I felt. Then the peace train's objective was to make sure that forget about where you come from, forget about the townships, the rural, forget about how rich you are. And thinking that I, what a privilege to be, to meet this, this, this young man and to, to then bring him into my project, into the peace train and experience the full aspect of, of Malcolm growing as a, as a young, young person. But once he got into the peace train, his whole passion and his whole desire for music, I think, uh, just exploded. Yeah, he's, he's totally different to the person that I met in 1998, 97, 96. He's, he's a much better version of himself. So learning to play music and actually composing songs, it all happened when I used to feel very lonely and down. Mello was able to really find who he is in the world through his music and through the different sounds uh, um, that he was able to produce for himself. There was a song that he did produce at one stage. It was called Don't Fight, Just Talk. And the lyrics of that song just spoke so much about Malcolm, about him not getting into fights. Let's try and work things through. Let's try and talk things through. And I think that is part of his personality. I remember uh, there was a song that I composed with Sheridan Katz called Don't Fight, Just Talk. And every time I performed that song for Americans, the people went wild. Like I felt like I was a star because most of the time we wore traditional outfits, bare shoes, and we did Zulu dancing, stamping and gumbo dancing. Not a violent person at all. Um, even although he could have gone to a violent route as some of the other children did. And uh, having nothing but nothing was all he knew and then losing his mother could have really drastically changed, changed his path. But then music sort of wormed its way into his life. I wouldn't say saved, but shaped him in a way. As, a, as I've heard, he, he, um, he used to abandon himself in his room, surrounded by all his music his life could have taken a drastic change. I think Malcolm in particular, he saw the big world out there, you know, which, which is very good for, for children. I mean, that's why it's important. Being in music, and music was the one that helped me survive through all the barriers, and it made me overcome so many things and obstacles that I had mentally that every time I would compose a song, it was through music that I was able to see another day. Check this out, check this. I said, life on the streets, check your back to survive. You never know when it's time or end of your life. Now, watch what you say, what you do when you're stepping. Cause every day for you is just another yo. Testing off one my rings and it hurt like a beastie. My watch and my honors, my money and my wallet. I watch them run away, I thank God for the day. I slowly walks away. So having met Sharon also gave me another opportunity to actually s to join this group. And even better still, they told me that 
there may be an opportunity to go to America. And I knew of this word America, but didn't know which direction it was. And I knew that it obviously, it was a beautiful place. Then the day came for going to America. I don't know if there was anyone more excited than Malcolm. And I, I really think it was, it was, it was a huge development for, for him and all the children because we had five weeks in America. I mean, it's unheard of actually. And in 1995, that was my first opportunity to go and do music with Sharon Katz. When you travel, it's more valuable than a university qualification can, can give you because it opens up your mind to such bigger dimensions that whatever you see and whatever you experience, you can't attach value, monetary value to that. We thoroughly enjoyed Disneyland. We got to meet uh, some of the characters of Disney World and uh, we had a lot of rides there and we had to move on because we couldn't stay there for long. And uh, we moved on to New Orleans and New Orleans, hey, we loved uh, the kids there. We got to mingle with them and uh, we had uh, like a full house there so everyone enjoyed our show and they were excited to meet us like afterwards. We had to sign autographs. We just loved it there because the crowd was there for us, you know, like uh, during the performances, hey, they were going wild for us. and. Like afterwards, we got to meet a lot of people and we stayed there for like five days and in, within those five days, we got to go to the churches and we got to meet the people in the churches and they gave us like awards and you know, things like that, you know. Prior to that, he had acted in a play called Jimbo, um, which told us also that he really enjoyed the arts. Yeah, we went to a lot of uh, places, to a lot of schools, uh, to do additions. One of the places we went to was St. Philomena's home. They had a lovely hall there. We had additions. And this youngster came out, 14 years old, rapping. And that time rap was just coming in. I'm talking about 1992. And then we were packing to go. So I said, hey, to Demi Venturas, the director, I said, why don't let's give that chap another chance there, man, that melody. And he came out even better. I think the first time he came, he was a bit nervous. With the rehearsals, he picked out, he started blossoming. He got a bigger part in the second half, which was one of the gangsters. And during performance, he performed very well. Very talented youngster. Boy, nothing. No sports, no concerts, no action. Nothing. Only crap, crap, crap. One way. There's a lot of actors and uh, a lot of very, very prominent actors and actresses at the time. And I, I was acting alongside Helen Mirren. I never knew who she was, but she was such a beautiful and humble human being. And I think she knew my background that I come from an orphanage home. And I remember every time we took a break, you know, she would give me an apple or something. So I think she just was so passionate that, you know, um, I shouldn't feel that I'm, I'm out of place. And, you know, and I suppose she always felt like she wants to give me something, you know. And it was amazing that a person that I was acting with, I, I didn't know that she was such a big person in, in, in the film industry. And I think Cheryl Johnson also gave me this opportunity of actually knowing that there's so much more out there within the arts besides what I loved more was music. Sharon Katz and Marilyn, they were really almost took him in as mother figures and they inspired him, they encouraged him, they supported him on his life journey. So that was very encouraging to see. So when I'm called, Kono Baba ngum funa yo, tiwa bambiza ngum kibel. Yes. Ubaba. Yes. Umlung. Oh, ngiambo umlung. Eish. Eh, da ya sogun zimbola la petola. Ah. Mchulu kumbola kwa la petola pe na. Oh. Oh, Oh, Yes, yes, yes. Oh, my mother. Oh, no, 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 no,
kukhona abafazi ababili engababonayo ngesikhathi sikhonethe kwebabedlungu basho abelungu bachazela ukuthi ke lo umntana wethu simkhulisile samenza yonke lento kusho ukuthi ke ngenxa ukuthi ke kwangasabonakali mama ongasabonakali lutho lo khuleli phansi kwalabo bafazi babelunga ngabazi ke miya bazi to give him more of a home and expose him and but we we loved him so much and whatever he wanted we just wanted to give him like parents actually really responded to to being in the family and so he became family and that was um that's emotional for me to talk about it because uh, Malcolm just became a part of our lives our everyday lives was revolved around being being parents to Malcolm I wasn't with him when he met his father, but I heard all about it, and uh, I'm very happy he found his family. That is, that is how a person can feel they have their feet on the earth no matter what happened in the past and and I'm very proud of Malcolm for m taking those steps and being proactive it was like what happened you know why why didn't you try and find me and it was really um a touching moment uh, witnessing Malcolm meet his father I wasn't there for him I was never there for Malcolm you know when he grew up I wasn't there hey where's my father where's my father no father Hey, man, how do you grow up with no father? It's difficult. No, no, it's, 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 it's painful. I grew up not knowing what is it like to say, hello, daddy, or to even hear a father saying, I love you, son, or even a mother saying, well done, I love you, you know. It's something that I don't know what it's like. I've, I've never felt it. You wouldn't think that he didn't have a mother you, or a father. You'd think he came from a, a really family-oriented background, but he didn't. Really a great husband, a father, a, a provider. He really is everything to me and my children. And he's given us, he's given that to us, which is important. It, it's, it's fundamental. And I can't imagine what would my life be like if it wasn't with him? You don't know your father, what? How you feel, man? Hey. I love you, mom. I'm sorry. What you can do, man. Hey, what you can do. Institutional care is very much a colonial and Western concept. It is not an African concept. And these children that are put into institutions do not learn proper family values. There was a family from Greenwood Park and uh, they were known as the Koromanskis. So they took me into their family and that was beautiful. It was also coordinated by Patrick Foster. He allowed me to actually go and stay with them during the holidays, so they became my second family. Now you know what we were told when Christine came and told us, we like to take the boy in. It's fun. We were put into our family, and it's about the same age as Clinton. So she gave us the background, and her father was a white man, her mother was a black woman, and she was an alcoholic. And the police had found you on the street. Do you know that? Obviously, it seems like both my father and my mother did not take time to actually grow me, nurture me and stuff. Maybe I can blame apartheid because apartheid did make it very difficult for myself and did make it difficult for them. Yeah, I met her at the railway station there. She was selling beers there, you know. I was unjustified that time. 
because it was, I was under apartheid, you know, we were under apartheid. I used to come to her there and I used to sleep with her, you know, it, it, I used to sleep with her on the railway station there, right at Mkuzi railway station. She had a blanket there, I used to come and sleep under the blanket early in the morning. I used to go home. Unjani in Babak. Unjani. Unjani. Yeah, what's the motherfucker? Hey, what's the matter? Oh. Hey. Hmm. I call him and he's home and he's home. He's home and he's home. What's that? How? Baguette. Hey, Baguette. You don't want Johnny and I. Hey, Baguette. Hmm. I was wild, you know. Hey, I was a wild guy, you know. Hey. No, I was wild and up and down. I was, hey, no, I was, I was a bit heavy, you know what I mean? Yeah, hey, I'm not heavy no more. No, I cooled off. I didn't go to the army. I didn't go to the army. Why? I refused. They put me in reformatory. They said, why you don't go to army? I didn't want to go. I didn't want to go to the war, the white man's war. I, I'm telling you, man. I never wanted those things. No, I never. I had my own war and fighting in my own life, you know, hey, man, you know. Hey. Hmm. She used to sell beers at the Mkuzi on the railway station, and they used to sell tea, and we used to sell buns. I met her there. Malcolm's mother never ever came to me to say, Gary, this is your son. She never even one time, no, I'm just, I'm talking now, you know, she never came and say, Gary, this is your son, or it's, 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 you know, she never came and said, Gary, this is your son. She never came to me. But she never told me that, hey, this is your son. But I knew it was my son. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. I used to see myself sleeping under trees, again, under plastic bags and cardboards with my mother there. And in the evening, I used to be same situation, but at the market where all these vendors would basically lay out all the stuff on the table and have lots of bags and plastic. So which means that they're almost camping. She was still my, my wife. Like I can say she was still my wife because I used to stay with her at, 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 at the club. I used to, but she never, ever told me that Malcolm was my son. Hey, yeah, this, I don't know why or what or where or why or gee, I just, I don't know, you know, I just, hey man, because I was, I told you, man, I'm, I, I, I was wild, you know, you know, that time I was... And obviously my father used to work very close to where my mother used to be stationed and selling her stuff. And uh, I guess that's how I was conceived, by him visiting my mother and, you know, they used to meet and things happened. In the night, we used to go in the night, you know, we used to go, you know, in the night time, the, the best time to go in the night to, to get the, 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 the girls, you know, you know, you know, in the, in the, 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 the music is playing in the night when you're a young boy, the, the trains are coming, they're going, the trains were going, you know, they're coming. I just like black. You know what I mean? My, me, I like black. She was beautiful too, you know. We got the click together. She used to come to my house there at, at the home, in the night. I used to bring her into my room. You know, I used to bring her into my room and we used to sleep there. You know? Malcolm never really mixed with the other boys as much as they mixed with each other. He was more of a loner. His own identity was clearly being formed. Um, he knew what he wanted, how he wanted it, and could be quite stubborn about the direction that he was going in. To think that I didn't even think we would last about three months or even a month for that matter, and yeah, we are all these years later, because he was just different. He was just into his hip-hop, and I was like not feeling the whole hip-hop vibe and this, you know. Every time he spoke, it was like foul language. It was like, oh, no, I can't deal with this, really. As much as I come from Yaradiju, this sort of foul language is not for me. Constant, constant, constant. When it came to holidays, all the children 
went back to their own family and I never went back to Zululand. I just basically stayed there because there was no place for me to go back to in Mkuzi. But he just loved his music. It was his escape. It was his way of, uh, if he got into trouble, he would always go to his room, put his music on loud, uh, and then that was it. You knew he was working through whatever issues he needed to work through. And now, Philadelphia, please welcome all the way from Durban, South Africa, four-time Grammy winners, Lady Smith, Black Mombazo. Nangazi. <laughs> Uguti la e South Africa kukona unjinea o ngabanje ngo marko. Nangalo ugubonu muntu oguazi kutanganisa is sound. Ie akapela njongo batina stula nje amazu. Indebe se isi stupera kulu le ebe uguti njalo umasio ula ukhale umingi ili uguti ii ngabi sound izo banjani la. Sambona nonga kaya nisapila na. Oba anabanga pumile lango kufiga na mtanje na kulele kaya ilishe. <laughs> Mr. Mshengo, this man was like a sun's rays. Just like Sunny Boy was this booming, glowing rays of hope in Mkuzi and Janini. That I could look at him for inspiration within the industry. That if he was able to work with all these such beautiful, superior artists out there and just be humble and and just be the person that he is. If I could take away something, that is what I would take away from Shengu, is that pure genuineness, this pure, humble person, you know? He'll never make you feel out of place. California <laughs> Nichi ibizo nguti ise, ise sola na pish. E, gune night lab la payana bonke wenjinia S7 zenabo iminyaga gusuge la e, ngama late 80s kwazo kwazo figa umarkom. Leanda obesazi njuguti masi yagi wananjalo isa ndia kona izo bayimbi. Buzi misela njuguti hailapu zotula nje uvale inje bunga kinage okuzwayo ukolo uguti abandu luka bakuzwayo bayak chablera. The ladies with Black Mambazo are people that I used to respect so much and never knew that eventually there may come a time where we're going to be working together. Wafige wangenzeli simanga ngobala hapo wafige waishanganisa isa hundi ngalengela. Hai, ngamfuma, ngalelula ngataika, lintizwa lenai, ya wazi umsebenzwa hai. Kutewe umanga abe kutlula enyitizwa ya igati usande engineer we Mambazo. Ngase nkuluma na mfuwantle kutle na umsebenzi. Uh, when I was coming up as a jazz musician in Durban uh, in the early 2000s, uh, Mr. Tlego was already there as an inspiration uh, to us, introducing us to new technologies. You know, I even think like one of my first jazz sessions that I did was in his studio and we were working with uh, the late uh, Dr. Brian Tusi. Kusugela eh, ngali 2006 or 2005, kuze kubei manchu, si sebenza na ye kwi mambazo, eh, sa kwele sa sebenza kuna nji laikaya, mangabe si laikaya ngoba. 
Mr. Ntego has, has worked with so many people, you know, and we're truly thankful for, for his commitment to, to the craft. Recently, he's been working and touring the world with the great Lady Smith Black Mambazo, and we really look up to him. Ngabushonje ngomalko mngati umundu oisibusi soka kulu ezu indagiti e South Africa. Ogu mangaza yogu guti maengo kaila ngempilo yake. Uguti usugapi. Waza liluapi. Mkuza wasuka kona. Waza watuola lumdeni akulele kona. Wafunda. Wakubega. Logo kuniga eh, ukuzi luguti. Iskate sine ngabandi mpili mba itambisa. Even though I've been working with so many other well-known artists uh, constantly, but Black Mambazo has kept me busy and has kept me doing what I love doing, especially when we're talking about traveling and traveling the world. So Malcolm, as I've saved his number on my phone, <laughs> is Malcolm the producer, but exactly, it's um, Sonny Boy, also the engineer, also the beat maker, also the producer. <laughs> yeah, look, seven and Malcolm, it's the best thing ever, the best producer ever I ever met. Uyawazi uguti akfunde wena, uguti seven zaganjani. Um, I was eager to meet this guy, and then this guy just came. I remember was playing. I was playing. Um, unmixed songs that I produced in my house. When this guy got there, I didn't know he was the same guy that just told me about that. He's the perfect engineer, he works with Mambazo and them. Because I just saw this colored guy, you know. In South Africa, you know, skin color, skin tones, tells a story. Um, Ungena Glace Studio, Utole, a warm welcome from Umuntu Ongamaz. Wow, it's a colored boy. Kulubisi Zulu, Gelela, Eyona. Then Aglalele, actually, idea of your music, a Besege, Ayaglegele, Tenini, Ipumelento, Eyona. Back in the days when we were doing um, Deben's finest tune. So Malcolm um, Sunny Boy was uh, involved in making Deben's finest a lot. Uh, there's a collab that we did with Professor, and he helped us to produce um, uh, that track, Deben's finest by Deben's finest featuring Professor. Oh yeah, oh yeah, as I said, Deben. Peter's first feature on a Kwaito song was with character, and we, we did it with him, with Malcolm. And it, it was a smash hit, that single by character Choose. So our sounds met and there was a best combination. Apart from us working, is he has always been a brother to me. Ulu was in Jungle Bezazi, a instrument we as in Jungle Bezazi, we was a good creator, a instrument Ungeco, where no figure in Jusufagama voice, Uyaguazi, Ugugla Lela, no more back to a winner, or we as in Dokulumangai, got to a new was Gugla Lela, Akfite. Productions. Okay. There's a song that um, caused rackers in South Africa. We, we, we knew that the song was going to be big at some point. Umsindo. We bang him out. Mazi record a lingo me studio, she said no me come about Kumbula say she would see is over Kalisa band. And Nangam Pella, six years later, about the whole South Africa was talking about the song. Do be bali male, be bangi male. Utel my say yaga in a low a peshe as a sitting clerk. Unga wazi nugu tushi yekai, wea sazi tina siya hamba slali sise kai. Wena njongubu tanda ganje nu mdenu, tanda slali ukuluma ngukoskazi, ngukoskazi, ngane uzo gwasi nu mela letu. Ie, tu yoguti jale ngu januari. Il valentine nge kupindu ibon. Suela ngu januari, ya kumach, awuke South Africa, wea hamba. Uzo gwasi, awa tintlega, awa bafuetu. Iti wapela. Nice the valley, Lil Manga Beniti, a Nibonutum Sevens and Aubam Bangizo was.
just became an organic um, way of us working together and it, it's been such a beautiful I've learned so much from from Mubabu Msheng, from the way he we used to spend many hours at the airports you know waiting for connecting flights for him telling me about where he came from the farm and how he also missed his father you know all those kind of stories it reminded me of the person that I was when I was small also not having those things I said for me, I is uh, waiting for Lady Smith Black Mambazo to come. I took a train this morning from Philadelphia where we had a, a gig last night. So the guys should be arriving any minute now. I was a engineer in the field of four, and I was a kid in the field of four, and I was a kid in the field of four, and I was a kid in the field all the Mongini gamers. I used to hire a studio a long time ago in the 90s. I used to record them. Eventually, I started designing his productions. I started working with him, engineering for him. And it's never really changed me in any way that I should just feel that I'm so much greater than other people. I never ever felt that. Apart from knowing him that he's got experience, live, digital, analog, and everything. Remember, I works with Mambazo. So I gave him my data. When I got back, three of the songs that I gave, I gave him were thoroughly mixed and ready to go to radio. And I never looked back. We are dealing with someone who is more than an engineer, and his goal all the time is to make a magical production. Malcolm is all about the finer details, and we are like a footy more bad. Hey, go to your baby, Sagatlation, please. Pennsylvania <laughs> And now I'm looking for a taxi that's going to take me to my next destination to set up the sound for Ladies with Black Mambazo. All the Busim Klongos, I mean, it's people that you used to see on TV, but eventually they used to come to my studio and I used to work with them. It's people that I knew personally. The, the, the most amazing thing about working with uh, him is that uh, he has a sense of melody. When he mixes your music, uh, whether it's in the studio, uh, even worse when he's recording, I mean, he's performing with you live. He's a kind of an engineer that performs with you live on stage. He, he understands the dynamics of the music. Once he gets them, uh, I'm telling you, uh, he knows where, when to put a delay, he knows when not to put it. Uh, he understands everything that happens on stage. He would come and sing uh, on, a, on a microphone to make sure that an artist gets what they really want. They don't rely on an artist only, but he would also go on stage and make sure that an artist gets what they want. Engineering, engineering, the guy is dope. From just making sure when we want to produce quality music in terms of studio environment and whatever, you know, we know that when it's behind the mixer, you know, everything come out like really hot, 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 hot. My experience with Malcolm was nothing short of amazing because of his high level of workmanship and skill that he presents at every given opportunity. Not only does Malcolm have the, the the amazing skill he also has amazing people skills 
when it comes to dealing with artists and getting our, our sound checks done at the concert or at the performance, getting us to sound amazing to the audiences out there. Um, Malcolm has been a great friend to work with. Um, we toured with uh, Simpi Wedana, we worked with Karen White and, and many other artists over the years. All right, so now we just arrived in Alaska at a place called Fairbanks. This is truly breathtaking, it's unbelievable. This is some amazing stuff. If you look at these trees behind me, it actually looks like somebody just put them here, not planted them. Look at me, I'm crying, my eyes can't see. I'm flooded by the tears that flow endlessly. My heart is bleeding, I'm feeling weak. I hit a hurdle in my life. There was a time when I worked so, so, so damn hard and even not sleeping, not eating properly. I remember it was around about August. I was told that I had cancer. That alone is enough to kill somebody. Whew, constant back and forth and it was just, yeah, it, was, it wasn't a pleasant time. It really wasn't. Um, it was very uncertain. It was an, an uncertain time for all of us, I think. You know, a brush with health, it's a wake-up call for anybody. Malcolm drives himself. In those days, he drove himself more because I think he was really intense about everything he wanted to accomplish. We are in 2010, so I guess I was excited to the World Cup. It was the World Cup and business was booming. Malcolm was busy. So I just told her that we were going to go now, we were going to go now. We were going to go now, we were going to go now, we were going to go now. We were going to go now, we were going to go now, we were going to go now. We born with the Iban Begil. Got on in a seven's work out and an eye. Why is that gonna go in jail? In the morning, we've got another flight to catch. So, this is what the morning looks like. Finding out that Malcolm had uh, colorectal cancer. I mean, firstly, it was totally unexpected because number one, he's, he's young and supposedly healthy. Um, it just didn't make sense. The, there were no symptoms or indications to say that he could have cancer. So we were really shocked. We were kind of, we were blown away and, and life uh, just changed in, in a split second. That, that information was so toxic to my brain. Egunzi magunja alu wache nisa ugute umundu. Nagegela kakulu umsebe nzi nga pezu wake. Nga fundu kulu gie nguti utando analo lo msebe nza wenzayo. Nuguzi mesela wake, nuguzi nikela wake. Igona ugnoba yonke indu wiena. And he had already accomplished a lot in a short time. But the time when he got sick, I hope and pray that he realized how life is short. And I, I do see this in Malcolm. He is able to, to relax a little bit. He doesn't slow down. Uh, slow, slow is not uh, part of his vocabulary. You know, he always wants to do things and get things done. And when he had cancer, I mean, it was a case of, you know, now you have to worry about your health. Kodwa, saban zimagele so skati na kutina gumi ambazo. Ngoba kwa wakoni skati so kuta hambe. Ayespele la ngad. Kumbula wani so skati sa so hamba se raunde nje kona la South Africa. So when I went to Cape Town to undergo my operation to get rid of the cancer, it was so scary that I had brought into this world his children. I had his wife and I had all these things. And I'm thinking to myself, what now? I'm dying. Yeah. 
you have to keep up this strong front like everything is fine and in the meantime inside you're falling apart you can't exactly fall apart outwardly because you need to keep it together for everybody else i needed to make sure that i can't let malcolm see that i'm just as terrified as he probably is because you can't have everybody being terrified and everybody falling apart then it's just going to be a shambles and i think i draw inspiration from from her she inspires me just to continue living and and being strong for myself and for my family ukulu manje itene sabanya abantu abangalazi malcolm yalsaba ibanoi kodwa ulikibela song iskati ngoba ayikho indlela ukuthi afike la eyakhona ngaphandle ukuthi ahambe ngebanoi malinyakaza nje ngiyaye ngizwe lena ngithi ei macro ngabe malcolm ubathe akanjani manje nami yalsaba kodwa ke angifana engcondo you need to love each day really as it comes and appreciate each day and to really be thankful for that day esibonga kakhulu ukuthi ke owa recover lapho kule kule okhensa eya impete namhlanje singatha kukaze kwenzeke lutho sekuyiphupho ukuthi umfo kanhleko wakhe waba nesifo esibizwa ngekhensa and i think once melo got the spirit to get out there and to actually locate his family on his own i think that has also been so inspirational not only for him but for other children that can also say maybe one day i will find my family maybe i was abandoned not because i was a bad person maybe i was abandoned because my parents were going through difficulties you always strong baba yeah um, thank you malcolm eh thank you my brother so just finding out that he had passed away was also quite a shock because as much as we knew that he wasn't well uh we did expect for him to get better Mr. Kerry Fabi um at go baba wa go baba e engakhula ngingamjoyele obviously must be apart gate kufika wa ishanda uphile nabantu abaminyana because umama wa umuntu ominyana Malcolm called Gary and he spoke to his father and he, he says no he's fine he's happy to be in hospital and he's hoping to get better etc only to find out a few uh, like a week later or something that actually no he didn't make it he had passed away and so on and it's so funny because the day before he passed away Malcolm and I were just talking you know about him and and what even said that he must phone him again um and stuff just to check up on him I mean you would think that someone who never had a mother or had never had a father would um turn down the path to 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 drugs and violence and and crime and all of that could have gone on to drugs he could have gone into a uh, crime kawamsiza nje ukulu nkulu sandiboyi wampha nomqondo wampha nje konke ukuthi azisame abe ngumuntu ngoba ukube wakhula wahlama nkwebefu wahlala ukuya ngabe uya yavuka lapha esikhotheni but he forged his own path he harvests his fruits of labor the kindness that malcolm showed the, the love he showed to his family his family of origin do you still talking to this day about going back to to take stuff and groceries and he's enriched their lives tremendously i'm really grateful to have you know my wife Leanne that really understands me and allows me to continue doing what i love to do and continue traveling the world with these legends and when i come home i'm home and you know she's really been a beautiful wife basically a pillar of strength because one needs that i think we dated for about 7 years before getting married we only married i think in like 2007 and have been married ever since we've had our ups and downs mostly ups this marriage now i believe is lasting not because of what the children so have done but because of the family values he learned within the family yeah i believe this yeah definitely definitely yeah oh, i never thought i'd see you no institution can teach a child about family values um it is a family that has to teach a child that did a good job by giving me a chance and uh 
It, one of the first chances to actually have a dad. And thank you. No problem, it was a pleasure. <laughs> yes, and there's the big lady right here. <laughs> Auntie Faye, my big mom. <laughs> He really is an inspiration and, you know, his life is a true testament that, you know, if you have the willpower, um, if you can dream it, you can achieve it. He's really testament to that. And I'm really proud of you, Malcolm. Really, you really made me feel so good seeing you and you, what an achievement you've made in your life. Wow. Thanks to you. Well done. Well done. <laughs> love you so much. I love you too, Auntie Being in his life, and continuing to be in his life, it's, it's just pure joy. <laughs> thank you, thank you, Shashi. Kutwa minang bonga we na pela ikandala kuluti kuchengi nga tabuga le anglande le la panga tabuga ko. Me aku bonga kakulum fano. Whenever they tell me that Malcolm Uyo Uyo be an engineer, I, I just become the happiest guy because I know by default that show will be amazing. Uh, he's the one who also helped me with this. So I want to let you know that Yo, it's Sunny Boy. It's whack. For as long as Malcolm is alive, I don't see South African music falling apart. Tinda banga tinda u tinda wa kulu mbrela manje. Ovula shagi lemgaya. Watinda banga tinda. Watinda banga tinda. Watinda nzi zunda la kuye wakaluma kuya. Watinda banga tinda. Zelwimbet, 